Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. It was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. My quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex-partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants. Had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo's Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. It was death. I made sure the Brain Eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? Communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne. Sublight's favorite freelancer. I'm such an admirer of your work. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. You're a compassionate person, Captain. And you're right. Halcyon Helen was a talented woman. She had a gift for transforming her art into wealth. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric, could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Ludovico, you wound me. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give him the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract? Because I promise you, I'll win. First sensible thing I've heard all day. Oh, uh, my apologies, Mr. Ludovico. That was unprofessional of me. Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You're reliable and competent. 
You've been taking care of yourself ever since you arrived on Halcyon. And you're entirely independent. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. I'm pleased to hear that. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Helen was more than popular. She gave something to this colony that no product line could ever provide. Real happiness. No one has ever been as well known or as well loved. Uh, outside of our courageous business leaders. I represent the law, Captain. But what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the Administrator is... politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. I'm pleased to hear that. From everything I've heard, you're a competent freelancer. And at the risk of sounding impertinent, we desperately need the help of someone competent. Thank you for your time, Captain. Whenever you're ready, I've authorized the Unreliable to land at the Grand Colonial. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. Eridanos is a hydrogen-helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos Atmospheric Complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation. Confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities. Atmospheric cleanliness is unexpectedly pristine. Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. 
I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling's been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. He did it. It's always the boyfriend. Emergency stay and accident disappearing goop capsules are currently low on capacity. Would you like to order a new 5,000 caps carton of goop for this unit? Folks get heated when it comes to cereals and their actors, I suppose. Not particularly. But I think some folks were jealous of her success, or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. Why, she was a natural. People fell in love with her. She managed to wrangle up a following all on her own. She ended up about as famous and high-runged as your average VP, which rubbed a lot of Byzantines the wrong way. Actors ain't supposed to get preferential treatment. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. I do. Rizzo's happened to rent out the Grand Colonial Ballroom from Slug for the unveiling. A nice mutually beneficial event. But the murder's gone and ruined that. Along with nine out of ten of my favorite cereals. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. You're certain? All right, then. Guess we can probably set you up with some spare uniforms if you must yours. I could have sworn you just said we aren't allowed to depart. Apologies, sir, but the atmosphere complex is on complete lockdown. No one's allowed in or out until the murder investigation's concluded. Do you have any idea? Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. No, I'm sorry. We don't serve any drinks with those tiny umbrellas. It's all so horrible. I can't believe someone so famous as Halcyon Helen could meet a fate like this. It really is a terrible shame. I absolutely adored her cereals. I almost can't imagine someone wretched enough to do such a thing. You don't think a dissident could be here, do you? Get a hold of yourself. The administrator would never allow someone as dangerous as a dissident here. Eridanos is safe. This is all just a terrible coincidence. Of course, of course, you are absolutely right. I think the idea of a psychopath wandering among us is just making me nervous. Report. The immediate vicinity is sparkling clean. Minimal custodial actions required. I'll bet you 10 bits this is all just some sort of... Welcome to the Grand Colonial. Please make your... 
black hole birdies disappeared, you know. The poor fellow must be inconsolable. Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Constable Maria Keane. It's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight. Ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on? Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. What body? Oh, that. Goodness, no. This is far more interesting than Halcyon Helen's rapidly cooling corpse. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. You're rather sharp in your upper story. I can see why you're the inspector. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. Oh, goodness, no. I don't care for OSI doctrine. I just enjoy their math. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. Don't mind us, folks. Normal inspectors doing normal inspector things. The amplifier is now operational. Greetings, designated inspector and or unauthorized larcenist. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of. Begin amplification. The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed to function as a helpful and perceptive aid to the enterprising inspector. In the absence of a reliable deputy. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier? Tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. This is a bottle of unreleased Rizzo's product. Helen appears to have attempted to use it to spell something as she expired, but all she managed was a sticky bee. This hypothesis is plausible, but requires additional information. Now calculating likelihood of Halcyon Helen using her final moments to endorse Rizzo's Spectrum Brown. Low to moderate likelihood. Correct. Bertie Blackhole Holcomb is a registered guest at the Grand Colonial Hotel. Accessing guest database B, the Grand Colonial Hotel is proud to serve the following VIPs. Bertie, comma, Black Hole, Burbage 3001. This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved compliment. Splendid work, Inspector. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Footprint is a tailor-made 
suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonio. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. The Purpleberry Orchards. And a footprint. Inspector, that was absolutely marvelous. Beautifully deduced. With the help of my discrepancy amplifier, of course. Ah, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. My apologies, Inspector. I've not yet finished my autopsy. Come back later. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. Absolutely. Usually I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique or as quiet as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring or working on my automatic sprat peeler. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. Hmm. I didn't expect an existentialist question so early today. It's a need. Just as sprats feel they must breed, or canids feel they must brutally maul each other. I feel the need to create. Ah, uh, Inspector, I'm sure you don't want to spend four hours talking back and forth about the intricacies of a science project. It works. That's the important part. Because you're the Inspector. I should think that's rather obvious. I invented the discrepancy amplifier to assist me in my own medical work. When you were hired to investigate Helen's death, I realized I had my own part to play. I programmed the amplifier to assist you. I'm entrusting it to your care because I want to see my invention help a brilliant inspector solve the murder of the century. Think of the amplifier as my gift to you. May it avail you in the swift and efficient prosecution of justice. I still have the blueprint and several extra prototypes floating around, but I might recommend you try to be careful with it. Some of the amplifier's internal components are rare, shall we say, and I don't have an indefinite supply. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. You sure you... 